Yep. The beeping already stopped. So in this video that I'm chopping up for your enjoyment, I test fly a Flow Cosmos Power, I believe size 26. Rather large glider for me. I bought it for a bigger pilot. Ended up selling it the day after I bought it. I only got to fly it this once. In between that, I was teaching students how to do a forward clip in and then I demonstrated the technique and I'm just gonna include that in here, just a little tidbit of the Kylo School of Paramotor for your enjoyment. Thanks for watching. So look what we got. We got a brand spanking new flow paraglider in the house. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. Looks like a purple one. I got a purple one. <laughs> also got a red Charger 28, Charger 2. We're gonna give it a try. I love these gliders, man. So what I'm probably going to do is show you how to set up for a forward. There may be enough wind to kite this one. This one will kite at four miles an hour. Now you'll be having to walk into the wind almost the whole time. If you stand here with no brakes, the glider would probably slowly fall down. But if you walk this fast in this wind, the glider will stay up. But you got to keep that pace. If you pull the glider up and then stop, you hit brakes and you're standing still, then the glider just falls back to the ground. So pull it up and then maintain that pace as you do your correction. But you keep that momentum. If you're going to do a reverse, you just have to maintain that speed. It's the same thing on a forward. You're maintaining some speed so that it's easier to get going, get started. But it's starting to die down to just nothing really. So we want to set up into the wind. I'm going to get my glider and just show you how to set it up. And then you can just do the same right next to me there. Oh yeah. Big purple, shiny and new. I like it. So I'm going to take my rosetted glider. It doesn't feel particularly heavy. Similarly weighted as the Dudek uh, Universal. So go ahead and rosette your wing and let's go set up over here where we have some room to operate. Because if you look at which way the wind's blowing, that puts us running right into the trucks and that's all we really got. So if we go over here to this other side, that gives us some room. So here's a pretty good spot. I'm just going to lay mine here and you could stagger yours right over there and then we could all operate out of the same little area. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I got lots of slack in my lines when I lay it down. And I'm going to clear my leading edge. Just like everything is very similar to the reverse inflation, the layout, all that. A couple of different things that prop up whenever we have wind or no wind. Four or five miles an hour still forward, but that allows us to do a hand kite, clear our lines a little easier versus a hand comb that you do in a zero to two. So first I'm going to spread it out though. Conditions are light, so... I'm going to pick it up and just make some room in the sails here so that I can see that there's no line overs. There's the wing tip. Come up and back. And once I get the whole span, I can sort my lines. I call it wing risers, wing risers. So when I pick my risers up, it's the same thing. I'm going to back up. When I get to the end of the lines here, I, again, aiming them to the wing, I can see that I need to flip that one. Now this is where we either hand kite or we don't. There's not much wind, so I'm just going to do a manual comb. And that's where I take the risers and I come up here and find my brake lines and pull these brakes clear all the way out. Then the next set, and I just get them tensioned. And when I see they're tensioned and they're not hung up, I don't even have to pull the other sets. I can see that they're all cleared out. So now my lines are clear. Now this is where things start to get different. I'm going to take these risers and kind of make myself a path to the wing here. And I'm going to walk all the way to the wing without stepping on anything. And flick all my lines up and give myself some room. And now I'm going to back up. And when I get to the end of these loops, when I drop these, the A's are up, I'm going to point them out. So that when they hit the ground, but I've also laid them wide so I can come back and stand here and operate and clip in with my motor and everything. That was wing, risers. Now I go back to the wing and make sure the wing is in a perfect shape into the wind. I'm going to go around here to the center and I'm going to aim it. Wind's basically this way. I'm going to aim just right through the gap between the mud hole and the windsock. That's going to be my path that I pick. The wind should be somewhere in that realm when it decides to go. At least that's what I'm seeing on all the windsocks there. So I take my, I'm going to be standing right there, so I'm going to aim it like this. Come down, but now I need to shape up the side. You want a symmetrical layout as well. You want the tips 
to be the furthest thing into the wind and the center to be back. That allows the middle to come up first. If you go through the steps and go through the motions, it becomes habit and ritual, and then you'll do it correctly. But because I've only got these openings here, I've got to have them all exposed and open so that when I go, it takes air and turns into a wing. And when it turns into a wing, then I can move with it and get some lift on it. But if I'm just inflating it, See, it's reversible now, so sometimes when you walk back to the wing, you may do a, a reverse clip in. If it's blowing good, when I come back with my setup, I could go either way. But if you lay it out for a forward, it's ready to go. And so if you need to do a forward then, all you have to do is a forward clip in. Now, I'll demonstrate that when I get back with the motor. Oh, this is the wrong dang one. I wanted the other one. It's set up for a larger pilot on an 80. I'm a larger pilot. And I want an 80, so. So if you're laid out looking good, you'll grab your carabiner with whichever hand, right or left, and then the other hand goes to the riser, thumbs toward the brake, and then you put your thumb on top and clip it in, just like that. Your right hand there, left hand, thumb toward the brake, pick it up. Yeah, yeah, and then just hold your thumb, yeah, like a golf club, and that's how it goes on, just like that. Same thing switched on this side. Nope, nope, look at what you got. You done shuffled your thumb, it's no longer, so. There you go. No, no, no. Grab it. Grab it lower at the connection. That's where you're going to be holding it. So have the connection right here. Yeah. yeah. And then pick it up and then hold it like you're going to put a golf ball with it. Yeah. And it goes on just, just like that. I learned that a little differently. Yeah. I mean, there's other ways. That's just that's just one way that it always works. Yeah. Yeah. You, the hand on the beaner and then the opposite hand thumb toward the brake. It's just one grab, one move, and you can do it like that. So... Now you clear your brakes out, same way as before, clear and clear. Now this one you'll be grabbing your A's from behind, underneath, one in each hand. And then you come up through the middle with them. And then pull them tight, ten and two. Now I want you to find the end of those lines and where you're going to be standing without moving the glider though. Okay, right there. See? What you did was you laid it out too flat and now your tips are getting tight before your center. That's why you pull that center back so that the center lines get tight first. I'm going to give you an assist here. But if you lay it out flat like a bed sheet, the tips come up and you'll have a horseshoe inflation. Now this wing don't care. It's going to come up like nobody's business. But now when you feel for the ends of them, you'll get tight at the, at the center ones first. And that lets you aim. So if you got equal tension and equal distance right there, now they're even and tight. That's why you're aiming. That's how, which way your glider's pointed. So if you take a step, it's going to come up straight. If you're off to the side, you're going to hit one before the other, and it causes an asymmetric inflation. Now, the wind's going to cause it to turn a little too, but you're basically in the wind. So take a couple of steps back, and then you just, the A's are just, again, to bring it up. It's going to come up real quick. You have to check it with some brakes before it goes past you. Bring it up, a check, and then just find your balance where you're moving with it. Give it a go. All right, into the wind, move, move. Oh, too late. Keep moving, keep moving. Raise that brake up. There you go, find the center. Now move with it, there you go. I'm gonna take a short hop. I'll be back in a minute. Let's see if the Flow Cosmos Power 26 size is fun. I've got a, almost a full tank of gas in this stinking Adam 80. We'll see if I can get it off the ground. Trims are in, brakes are cleared. So fresh out of the box, I don't know what's going to happen. Clip. I like the fact that the A's are color-coded. The lines are color-coded. It's got a different color. Stabilo? Yeah, no, yeah. I don't know. I'll look at it when we get up in there. We'll check out the line set. There's this one. So yeah, I'm doing the same thing I just showed you. And I'm going to be going this way. Step back. Make sure my motor's running. This is where that exercise... work so now I check my surroundings and go for it make sure everything is where it's supposed to be I assume it is Stabilo? Yeah, okay. Oh, it's a brisk night out here in North Louisiana tonight. I do not have my jacket on. It was 32 degrees this morning 
on April the 21st. What is that silly shit? I don't even get it. 30 anything at the end of April. We're usually swimming right now. I'm surprised there's not snow. I guess it is snowing up north of us like in Tulsa. They were getting snow yesterday. I'm in a thermal. There it is. There it is. Oh, there's the edge of it. <laughs> oh, fun times. Fun times. So yeah, it's got the tip steer in with the magnetic holders. I like that. I really like Flo's products, man. Oh my gosh, this is so nice. Turns pretty docile. Now there's some dirt work that I'm doing. Drainage. The brakes are kind of stiff. I like that, it means it's harder to over control. Let's see what the students are gonna do here. It's got dedicated big ears. Boy, it's hard to do though. Oh, it does not want to do big ears. <laughs> ha! Which is okay, nor should it want to do big ears. Whoa. Yeah, and I need a little more weight on this. I'm unloaded on this glider. I think it would be a lot more responsive with a heavier pilot, for sure. So I'm gonna land before I get too, too cold here. What a nice ride. And of course, without fail, the GoPro failed. That doesn't sound like good English, but that's exactly what happened. I, I think I unplugged the mic, and so I completely botched the outro. I, I struggle. I struggle. I have many, many struggles in this world. Video making being among the, the top tier struggles that Kylo has. Winter is upon us. Winter is upon us. I hope you stick around for spring. We got some good stuff coming. I should be able to knock out some editing real soon, come like December-ish. <laughs> I'll have a whole string of videos headed your way. So stick around, I'm back at it. I gotta go do a drugstore day today. Yes, I still work at the drugstore on occasion. It's been a couple weeks since I stepped foot in there. I'm curious to know if they even remember who I am. See you real soon in the next one. Thanks for watching, much love, Kyle out.